Hello, this is uh, a video on section 12.1, which talks about limits. Today, we're going to have our first introduction to limits. So, uh, let's say we need to, we want to evaluate the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 when x is equal to 2. Well, we will substitute 2 in for all of the x's. And we'll have 2 squared minus 4 over 2 minus 2. Well, that gives us a problem because we have 0 over 0. We have no idea what that equals to. So we cannot evaluate this. But that's where limits come in helpful because they will help us to find the value of this function. So a limit is a function um, f of x. Uh, oh, a, a limit in a function f of x as x approaches some number c from uh, both uh, from left and right side um, and the limit of f of x becomes the value of f of x at c so in other words let's say we have a graph of any function doesn't matter what function it is right now so I uh, know let's say it's a a parabola okay and I have some point on this parabola when x is equal to c so when I say the limit as x approaches c of this function f of x so parabola there what it talks about it means that we have we're approaching this value, whatever this is, from the left and from the right side, and kind of squeezing in, and then it will produce the y value, the value of the function, right there. So that's what the limit tells us. So once again, we're squeezing in on this number, on this value at c, and it tells us what's the y coordinate. Um, of the, the function is now a lot of sometimes it's not as useful like with a parabola but in the situations uh, because we can just plug in the number but in a situation uh like we have in the beginning of our uh, lesson that actually could be quite useful there are three ways uh, that we're going to discuss that will help us to evaluate limits we're going to evaluate limits by using a table then we're going to do it graphically and a little bit closer to the end of uh, the lesson, we're going to do it as something called substitution. So, if we go back to our um, function x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. So, we want to find the limit of as x approaches 2. That's this part right here. So, as x approaches 2, we want to figure out what is the value of this whole function. As we know, we cannot plug in. 2 for x, where already saw what happened. You had 0 over 0, which is a pretty complicated question to answer, actually, right now. But we still can actually figure out what that value could be. So, once again, what we are going to do, we're going to squeeze in this function at x equals 2. So, I don't know what this function looks like. You can graph in the graphing calculator if you want to. Um, but you have some kind of a function like this. And we have no idea what happens when uh, x is equal to 2 to this function. We have no idea. But we're going to approach it from the left and from the right, kind of squeezing in. And that basically, we're kind of going to guess what would be that value at this point that we do not actually know? So by using the table, the way we can do it is by just plugging in numbers for x that are close to 2. And notice that we have to do it from the left side. Uh, so we have the arrow here. So we have to do it from the left side and from the right side. And what I mean by this is if I'm trying to get to 2 in the middle, From the left side, we're going to substitute the numbers very close to 2, but less than 2. So, for example, 
0.999 and then 1.999 like this and when i'm approaching two from the right side so i'm approaching two from the left and when i'm approaching two from the right side i'm going to be plugging numbers from the right side of two such as 2.01 2.001 and so on so we're getting closer and closer to two from both left and the right side now we do not know what the value of the function is at particularly two once again we try to figure it out we have no idea but the function still exists at 1.99 and 1.999 it does exist at those points so that's what we're going to evaluate so we're going to just substitute 1.99 in for x so we'll get 1.99 squared minus 4 divided by 1.99 minus 2. so you can use your calculator to calculate this and you should get um, 1 of uh, uh, 3.99 yeah. then we can substitute the next value 1.999 once again into the function so we're substituting this 1.999 into the function we calculate this and you can use your calculators and you should get 3.999 so we kind of can see what it's approaching from the left side but by the definition of the limit it has to be approaching the same value from both left and right and uh, it's going to come in very uh, very important in the future to make sure that it does both so now we're going to substitute 2.01 uh, so we're going to be approaching it from the right side so substitute 2.01 into our function And we're going to calculate this, and we should get 4. Point, um, 4. Point, 4. 0 0.01. And then we once again going to substitute the next number, so closing in even closer to 2. So 2.001 0 0 squared minus 2 over 2.001 0 0 minus 2, and that should give us. 4.001. So, once again, if you try to substitute this particular 2, the value of the function will be undefined. We do not know what it is. But we can see that as we're approaching this 2 from the left side and from the right, the y value that we seem to approach is 4. So, therefore, the value of this limit is 4. Now, so that's one way we can do it. We can do it through the table. Another way we can evaluate this is by graphing our function on the graphing calculators or by whatever graphing methods that we've learned and see what and maybe trace it and see what it is equal to. So we are graphing our function f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of how to graph it. You can just use a graphing calculator for now. But the graph of this function will end up being something like this. So this is our function f of x. Now, once again, we how we've got this graph is not as important right now uh, though we talked about how to graph functions in section 2.6 um, but right now this is the graph of the function so if you trace this you can find all of these values on this function all of these points you can find them except for this particular hole right there we do not know what's the value at this hole and that's at our x equals 2. However, by tracing and squeezing in, we can clearly see that at this particular hole, the value of the function most likely is going to be 4. So, therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 and then over x minus 2 will equal to 4.
So those are the two uh, ways that we can evaluate the limit. We can do it either for the table by plugging in numbers that are very, very close and get closer from both left and right, get closer to the value that we want to find. Or we can also do it graphically and then just trace from the left side and from the right side and make sure that the value that we're approaching, the y value that we're approaching, is the same and therefore finding out what the limit is. Now, there are limits that actually do not exist. So there are cer certain functions that will produce situations when there is no limit, does not exist. One of those situations would be an example three, limit as x approaches zero of x over the absolute value of x. So we're gonna uh, do it by using a table and then I'll show you a graph that would be a nice visual representation. Now for the table, I need to make another box here. I make one to few. So remember, we want to find the value when x is equal to zero. So that's our number in the middle. Therefore, we have to substitute numbers that will approach this zero from the left. And those numbers could be um, negative 0 0.99. Negative zero point uh, zero one, negative zero point zero zero one, and on the right side, it's going to be zero zero point zero one, zero point zero zero one, and so on. So we're approaching this zero from the left side and from the right side. So when we substitute these numbers in into our function we'll have negative point zero one over absolute value of negative point zero one. You don't have to write this out really, you can do it on the calculator, and you should get negative one. And then you plug in the next number, you should get negative one again. But when you do it on the right side, so when you try to plug in zero, you clearly will not get anything. But when you're approaching from the right side, you will be approaching one and then one again. So the problem here is we're not approaching the same value. We still don't know what this is gonna be because on the left side, we're approaching negative one. On the right side, we're approaching one. So there is no one particular number that we are squeezing in. Therefore, there is no limit, no limit. Or you can say that it's uh, indeterminate. We do not know what the limit uh, gives us. If we do this graphically, you can use the graphing calculators to figure out what we have. You'll see that the graph of this function will be something like this. From the left side, you get a line at the bottom, straight line. But from the right side, it's going to be also a straight line, but it's going to be above. So as you can see, there is no one number that this function is approaching. From the right side, from the left side, it's approaching negative one. From the right side, it's approaching one. It's not squeezing in in one particular point. So when the limit approaches two different numbers from the left and the right side, it's indeterminate. There is no limit. Remember, by the definition of limit itself, and follow back, it should approach number c from left and right side and it's going to be that value it has to be approaching the same number there are other situations when limit uh, will not exist in example four we have uh, the limit as x approaches two of one over x minus two so i'm just going to show this graphically it would be uh, easier to see um, though if you make a table you will see something similar so we already talked about how to graph these functions uh, in section 2.6. We're graphing one over x minus two. Um, so there would be a vertical asymptote at positive two. And I'm not gonna go through the whole process of how to graph this, but I'm just gonna remind you there would be a vertical asymptote at x equals two. There also will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, since it's a bottom heavy. 
and then you know you would find normally all the numbers but in reality your graph will look something like this this one and this one so this is the graph of our one minus one over x minus two well once again we are approaching two this is our key number right here two and if i'm approaching two from the left you can drag this function from the left you can drag it and we see that we're going down 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 we're actually going to negative infinity and if i'm approaching the same number from the right i'm dragging this line from the right but i'm going all the way up i'm going to positive infinity so if I'm going from the left, I'm going to all the way down to negative infinity. If I'm going from the right, I'm going all the way up to positive infinity. In other words, I'm going in two different directions. So I'm not squeezing in on a particular y value. And therefore, this limit does not exist. Let's keep writing this, I guess. does not exist the last example uh, i'm just going to show you um we, we, you don't have to worry about this one too much but it's just another example of when uh, the limit does not exist we haven't even talked about uh, sine functions or trig functions but very quickly um the graph of this function basically becomes isol uh, uh, isolating it just kind of goes like this and therefore whenever you're approaching x equals zero which is right there in the middle there is no particular value that you're actually going to approach because it can be jumping up and down with every iteration so therefore this one does not exist either uh, you don't need to worry about this one too much right now or at all really uh, i just wanted to show you another one so therefore, to summarize, there are three types of limits that do not exist. The first one was uh, the example when um, you, the first, uh, the example three, this one right here, where you were approaching the same point from the left and from the right, but it never squeezed in because they approached two different numbers. So limit x as x approaches c of f of x approaches two different numbers from the left and from the right again the example of this would be limit that x approaches zero of x over absolute value of x there are other ones but that's the one that we talked about second one is uh, the one that we just discussed uh, in example four, where you your graph goes all the way down and all the way up as x approaches a particular number. So limit as x approaches c of f of x increases or decreases without a uh, bound, or in other words, approaches infinity. So an example of this, is limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x minus 2. And the last one is the one with the sine function. Um, whenever it uh, oscillates between two fixed values, once again, you don't need to worry about this. Okay. So, remember in the beginning of uh, the lesson, or close to the beginning, I said that there are three ways to evaluate the limits. It was by using a table, and that's example one right here, when you go, you know, plug in the numbers very close to the value that you actually want to find from both left and right side. Then, by using, going graphically, where you graph the function and just trace this function from once again from the left and from the right 
to see where your value will end up being. And the last method was by substitution, and we haven't done that yet. So now let's talk about direct substitution. Direct substitution is really uh, the easiest way to do it, to evaluate the limit if it works. So let's say I want to find the limit as x approaches 9. So we're looking at example uh, 6a. So find the limit as x approaches 9 of the square root, oops, square root of x. So the direct substitution basically tells us that really what they can do in some cases is just take this 9 and substitute it for x. So we'll really have square root of 9, which is 3. That's it. Done. Next one, uh, b, the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 4. Once again, you take this number right here, substitute it for x, so you get 3 plus 4. The answer is 7. Perfect. C, x approaches negative 1 of this x squared plus x minus 6 over x plus 3. So you take this negative 1, substitute it for all of the x's. And you have negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 6 over negative 1 plus 3. And then you calculate both numerator and the denominator. So 1, 1 minus 1 minus 6 over 2. And give us negative 6 over 2, negative 3. Perfect. So you might say, well, why did we need to learn all of those other methods? And then we remember that the original question that we had, this original question D, the limit is x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, if I substitute my 2 in, we do not know what it is. So the substitution method is perfect when it works. It does not work all the time, but it's always, it should be the first one that you try. In a lot of cases, it does work, like, you know, there are three uh, out of four functions that we just did. It worked perfectly fine, but in some cases, it doesn't. Now we actually will learn how to calculate something like this in section uh, twelve point two, if I'm not mistaken. So we will figure out methods for evaluating limits uh, algebraically, but this is not time yet. Finally, some of uh, something that most of the students always have troubles with, this as far as I can tell is that the limit of piecewise functions. So remember, a piecewise function is a function that consists of two different pieces. Uh, part of it is 3x plus 2, works only for when x is less than 1. Another part is 4x, works only when x is greater than 2. So you need to find the limits of this function. So we could do this graphically, but we don't have to. Um, to time consuming, we can use our substitution method. So the first one, part A, wants us to find x, uh, the, the limit of our function f of x as x approaches negative 2. Well, the first thing we need to decide is which piece of the f of x function we have to use. Are we using the top piece or the bottom piece? Well, that depends on what is the x value that we're approaching. We are approaching negative 2. Well, negative 2 is clearly less than 1, therefore we're using the top piece. We do not need to use the bottom piece at all. That function, the bottom part, the 4x, doesn't even exist when x is negative 2. So all we do here is just substitute using the top piece by substituting 3 times negative 2 plus 2, and we get uh, negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4. Then on B, we're approaching this function when x equals 5, right here. Once again, we need to decide which piece are we using. Are we using the top piece or the bottom? Well, x equals 5 is clearly greater than 1, therefore we're going to be using the bottom piece. So we're not looking at the top piece at all. We're using the bottom one only. And we'll say 4 times 5 is 20. 
perfect. Now, this is the most confusing part sometimes. Well, I don't know about most confusing, but the part where most of the students make a mistake. Question C. We are approaching one. So, but one is a special number in this case because one is that one is that x value that kind of separates our piecewise function with using 3x plus 2 when x is less than 1 and 4x when x is greater than 1. So whenever you are approaching the, that one number that is your uh, breaking point, in this situation, you need to find both, evaluate both top and bottom piece. So here we will con uh, consist of two parts. 3 times 1 plus 2, which gives us 5. That means that we're approaching 5 from the left. And then 4 times 1, which is 4, which means we're approaching 4 from the right. Well, remember, we have to be approaching the same value. In this case, is this the same number? Clearly not. They're close, but it's not the same number. It has to be exactly the same. Therefore, since we're approaching two different numbers, the limit does not exist. Now, I'm not going to graph it very accurately, but if we do graph this function, remember, our x equals 1 is our breaking point. So, this is our left piece right here and our right piece is this way so it's not very accurate but it gives us an idea that when we're approaching this function from the left we're approaching one number and when we're approaching it from the right we're approaching a very different number, and therefore they do not meet. So let's do a quick summary. When evaluating limits, unless a question specifies otherwise, if you have a choice, the first thing you always should try is direct substitution. If direct, so you try direct substitution first. It's always the easiest way. But once again, just like with our original question, like uh, in, right here in the very beginning, direct substitution doesn't always work. So if that direct substitution doesn't work, if it gives you some kind of undefined weird answer, then you try either a table or graph. When we talk about piecewise functions, first of all, you have to pick the correct function to use. Pay attention to that intro, to that breaking point. Do, will you use the top function or will you use the bottom one? So make sure that you correct it, use the correct piece. Unless if the limit approaches the number where the piecewise function is split. So in our case, we're talking on this example, this was part C, where x was approaching 1, which was our splitting point. When x approaches that splitting point, then you have to use both pieces of the function. If both parts of the function give the same value, that value is your answer. If both parts of the function give different values, then there is just no limit or it doesn't exist. Uh, this was our video for section 12.1. We talked about limits. Uh, keep it real.